fire. Fire is an indispensable component of the Christian life. Not literal fire, but the fire of God that burns in the spirit of a believer. Every believer needs it to remain relevant and productive in the Lord. When the fire for God wanes, it leads to apathy towards the things of God. When there is no fire, you will lose the desire to read and meditate on God's word as you once did. When there is no fire, your desire to pray will wane. You will become tolerant of sin and indifferent to righteousness if there is no fire. When there is no fire, soul winning becomes extremely difficult. Your involvement in a local church will begin to dwindle when there is no fire. You will see many flaws in others and will be easily offended. Our pulpits will be cold and our sermons will be lifeless if there is no fire. Fire always catches people's attention. The world will not take the church seriously if there is no fire. When there is no fire, you will become too weak for spiritual warfare. The Lord understands the importance of fire, which is why he gave specific instructions to his people in Leviticus chapter 6, verse 13. He said, Remember the fire must be kept burning on the altar at all times. It must never go out. To thrive as a Christian in this world, you must keep your fire for the Lord burning. This world's constant spiritual climate is dangerously cold. Like many others, our love for God will grow cold if we do not make a concerted effort to keep the fire burning. And the thing about the world's spiritual coldness is that it is subtle. It does not come in a whirlwind, but rather as a gentle breeze that gradually but persistently wreaks havoc on us harming us before we recognize it. The fire is your faith-filled devotion and passion for God, that warm glow in your heart that leaves you in awe and reverence for God, that fervent flame that consumes all excuses and leaves you with nothing but pure love for God and His kingdom, that zeal that drives you to go that extra mile for Christ's sake, that love that compels you to study, meditate on God's word and linger in his presence. That burden that will not go away until you pray for those in need around you. That devotion that keeps you awake until you obey Jesus' command to tell others about Christ. That joy that keeps you in constant gratitude to God, regardless of your circumstances. That intimacy and fellowship with God. This is the fire. A fire of love for God got kindled when you surrendered your life to Jesus and accepted Him as your Lord and Savior. It blazed so brightly and passionately, coldness like an uninvited guest often creeps in along the way. Slowly the fire dies out, and a chill settles over a once flaming heart. Fire is the key to surviving these times. We must rekindle the flames of our first love for God. If we don't, we risk experiencing profound spiritual numbness. Spiritual cold is a cunning killer. It lulls people to sleep and they lose consciousness, unaware that they are in danger. That is why our lives must revolve around fanning the flame because the fire is essential to surviving the cold. Whatever else we are doing, we must keep the fire for God burning at all times. The fire will go out if we don't feed it. If the fire goes out, the temperature in our souls drops. And reigniting the fire requires far more effort than keeping the fire burning in the first place. Diligence in studying and meditating on the Word of God. Diligence in consistent prayers. Diligence in staying connected to a local church. Diligence in sharing the good news of Jesus. Diligence in exercising the gifts of God within you. All these are the oxygen that keeps the fire of God burning in our hearts. To keep our fire burning needs diligence, but its reward is a victorious, fruitful Christian life. The fire of God is too precious to lose. As a result, you must fight to keep it going. The devil is cunning. He will do anything to prevent a believer from being fervent in the Lord. He manipulates situations to put out the fires. He wouldn't mind having a believer work in a very legitimate, busy job to get him to stop praying. 
This is because he is well aware of the dangers of lukewarmness. A lukewarm life is self-centered, a life lived for the sake of the flesh rather than the sake of God. A lukewarm life is complacent and easily conforms to the world. Talking to a lukewarm church, Jesus said, I know all things you do, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other. Revelation chapter 3 verse 15. You are not alone in your noble mission to keep the fire burning until Jesus returns. You have the assistance of the Holy Spirit. Jesus kept the fire burning until the end. He expects that we will do the same. Do you need to rekindle your love for God? The Holy Spirit is present to assist you in rekindling the fire. Go to Him right now. The world requires your zeal to see God. The term fire has different biblical meanings, but in this context, it is referred to as zeal, passion, and fervor. The fire referred to here is spiritual, not physical, although physical fire was employed in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, it was the Lord who sent and started the fire. Beforehand, he had instructed the children of Israel to ensure the fire burned unquenchably. God specifically instructed the priest to ensure the fire was not put out regularly. Each day, they added wood to the burning fire on the altar. It was a ritual for them to keep the fire burning continually. You must note that God passed the instruction three times in Leviticus chapter 6, an emphasis that revealed the importance of this subject. Leviticus 6.12 the fire on the altar must be kept burning. It must not go out. Every morning, the priest is to add firewood and arrange the burnt offering on the fire and burn the fat of the fellowship offerings on it. And Leviticus 6.13, the fire must be kept burning on the altar continuously. It must not go out. The purpose of keeping God's holy fire burning on the altar was to retain God's presence among them and to ward off all kinds of evil. Likewise, as a believer, you must keep your fire burning for God all the time. The Holy Spirit is the catalyst of the inward fire burning within you, the spiritual fire. However, it is your responsibility to sustain this fire. It is also your responsibility to build Him an altar, set your bundle of woods on it, and await His fire to set you ablaze. If you have not gotten this fire yet, the act of building God an altar and gathering bundles of wood is the first step to getting the fire. It sure can be painstaking getting the fire started, but it will come. Remember, you are the temple of the living God. However, the major challenge is not in receiving the fire, but in preserving it. Has there been a time when you lost your fire? Has there been a time when your altar of prayer was as cold as ice? A time when a few seconds spent in the study of God's word seemed like a year? Do you have fears of losing your fire again? But there's good news for you. What you have received can be preserved. Your fire can be restored. You can keep burning for God without burning out. The Bible speaking in 1 Thessalonians 5.19, do not put out the Spirit's fire. This implies that many things can contribute to quenching this fire you carry. Your fire is a symbol of the Holy Spirit, and He cannot dwell where iniquity abides. God is holy, and His Spirit in you is holy. The most important commission of the fire is to purge and purify. It is sad to know that many believers ignore this function of the fire, one of the reasons it does not last. If your life must keep burning for God, you must walk in the pathway of sanctification. Sin is a reproach to your love and zeal. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Every unrighteousness is a sin. 
you must let go of lies, sexual immorality, and every other thing that has the appearance of evil. Sin offers nothing but death, death to your prayer life, death to your fasting life, death to your spirit, and eventually your body. Pursue a life of holiness if you want to keep burning. And unrighteous acts are not the only distractions to your burning intensity. Your desires and your motives also count. A man's heart is where his treasure is. Where is your heart? What do you hunger and thirst for? What are you obsessed with? Material things, affluence, or Jesus? If your answers to these questions do not point to Jesus, then the longevity of your fire is predictable. It will not stand the test of time. You have to wake up and pray yourself into alignment with the Holy Ghost. Let everything in you, including your thoughts, be restructured into His alignment. Your desires are like the raindrops on your burning fire. They will threaten it until they finally put it out. The Lord Jesus left a perfect example of a life burning for God. In the account of Luke chapter 6, 12, it says, One of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. This was one of Jesus' secrets to living a life of fire. An attack on your prayer life is a real attack. It is on the altar of prayer that you are being rekindled. There, the Father releases His oil upon you to keep you burning. You must ensure that your priesthood ministry of prayer never fails. This entails consistency in the place of prayer and not just a seasonal event. Satan understands that consistency is what attracts excellence, and he will do anything to make you consistent in everything but prayer. I beseech you, brethren, to take your time to analyze your spiritual altar. How fervent are you in the place of prayer? Are you hot or cold? You cannot afford to be lukewarm. You must arise from your slumber and thirst for the fire. Build a life of prayer. Have an insatiable desire for the Word of God. Surround yourself with men of prayer, for the scripture says, iron sharpeneth iron. You have to be ablaze for God. It is not only for ordained men of God, but a necessity for every Christian to survive the confusion of this age.